Halo 5 is arguably Microsoft's biggest exclusive since the Xbox One launched. Sure, there'll be bigger ones in the future, but Halo 5 has a lot to live up to. And after the mess that was Master Chief Collection, 343 are really under the spotlight. All the changes Halo 5 has made are apparent very quickly, but most of these changes have removed Halo's strengths and made it more familiar to other shooters out there. The main campaign is a lot more linear than previous entries. The large battles of the other Halo games, which I thought was the series his biggest strength are mostly gone. The game funnels you from set piece to set piece with the odd scripted moments slapped in, and it's very rinse and repeat. Your AI squad mates are also pretty useless, so play co-op if you can. The game's environments don't really help this either. Besides one forest area, they are very monotonous. There's plenty of forerunner interiors which have been boring since the first game. The battlefields are very small with only a few approaches to take. Some of the fights open up a bit and there is a lot more emphasis on verticality in these moments thanks to the game's increased mobility and much faster pace. But Halo 5's firefights really don't have much variety. Other Halos gave you a battlefield and said here's some vehicles, some weapons and a big open space, go do it how you like, which made the game organic. The shooting is as solid as it's always been and Halo does suit the new quicker pace it's adopted. The boost can come in handy to switch in and out of cover and get away from firefights, but, and I hate to say this, it all feels very Call of Duty Esque. Which isn't a bad thing, I'm not personally down on COD, but COD players have COD. Not every game should try and be like it, because they're never going to beat the numbers or its popularity. But I digress, the story relies a bit too much on expanded universe material. You can get by if you've played all the games, but for example, unless you've watched the painfully dull Halo Nightfall, then you'll have no idea who Spartan Locke is. The main characters do not get any characterization, and the story is all around dull until you get later in the game, and it does pay off with a decent cliffhanger ending which made me interested for the sixth game. The campaign and multiplayer look nice, not great, just nice, and it runs at a pretty much constant 60 frames a second, so the pace feels even quicker and smoother. Even though the campaign is average, many people play Halo for the multiplayer, and rightly so. Halo 3 had lots of game modes with plenty of customization and maps to keep people playing, but Halo 5 feels really sparse modes-wise compared to other entries. Now, 343 are adding modes and maps for free, so that counts as that somewhat. There's the arena mode, which are all four on four and take place on very small maps, and a few feel like palette swaps of each other. I personally really like SWAT and the breakout mode, which is Halo 5's one life mode, and it's interesting how differently people play here. Capture the flag just boiled down to people farming the kill death ratio rather than playing for the objective. The arena is good fun, but if you don't like small chaotic maps like me, then it won't be for you. But Halo does offer a mode with all-out warfare on large maps called Warzone, which clearly takes some inspiration from MOBAs of all things. There's multiple lanes, bases to capture, and AI opponents to destroy, which provide a healthy amount of points for whatever team kills them first. Each team has a core as well, which can be destroyed once all the bases have been captured. I really like this mode, and there's a lot of ways to contribute than just killing the enemy team. In fact, you're heavily rewarded for base captures and killing the AI bosses. This is the mode though that uses the requisition system, the arena doesn't. You use this to place weapons in your loadout, and the system seems needlessly confusing at the minute. You use requisition points to buy requisition packs to equip power weapons like rocket launchers and vehicles and other boosts. You can only equip these however when you get to the required requisition level by playing well in that game. So you can't start the game off in a tank and wipe everyone out. Plus, killing other players earns a measly amount of points, so power weapons aren't that overpowered. You can play Warzone without requisition points and the AI opponents. I didn't have any connection issues during all the modes. Honestly though, I would say hold off on Halo 5 for now. If 343 are adding more maps, modes and balance updates for free, then it'd be wise to do so because I imagine it'll get a price cut around Christmas and you'll get a cheaper, more fully fleshed out game in return for your patience.